Hello everyone and welcome to another Zozin session. How about that? Bet you didn't expect that. So, uh, some time ago I found a pretty cool extension for Emacs. It's called Fix Me uh, with, as you can see, double E. Right. And um, what it does, it basically like goes through all of your buffers and collects all of the to do's into this, uh, you know, like aggregate view. Uh, and it also allows you to jump between them. And one of the cool features of this extension, uh, as I demonstrated some time ago, is that how it uh, handles urgency. Right. <clears throat> so here you have an urgency tab. Uh, and if, if you want to increase the urgency of a particular to do, you just add an extra leading character. Right. So instead of to do, you say to do with double O at the end, and that gives it an uh, extra point of urgency. In fact, the more O's it has at the end, uh, the higher the urgency, right? So I, I, I thought it's a pretty cool idea because it makes it super easy to bump the urgency or reduce the urgency just by adding or removing the character and it works with fix me as well uh, so there is like a section uh, with explanation on how it works right so you can use fix me or you can use to do and uh, yeah that's pretty cool and it also sorts them by the urgency right so if you found an issue that you want to work like next uh, you can basically bump up the urgency and then refresh this thing and it's going to be at the top and you can just basically sort by that urgency so uh, I'm going to put the link to this extension in the description because I think it's a pretty cool idea. I really like that idea. So let me find the description file. Uh, where is my current description file? There's too many of them. Okay. So fix me extension for Emacs, right? So let's actually capitalize Emacs. Okay. Uh, but I found a problem with this extension is that uh, for some reason, when I close the Emacs, it takes like a couple of seconds to close. And look, I just close the Emacs and I'm waiting. It's not even a couple of seconds. It's actually quite a lot of time. I have no idea what is it doing. Maybe it's sending all of my personal information to the author of this extension. I, I don't actually know, so I'm not going to accuse anyone. So uh, yeah, but I know for a fact that it's caused by that extension uh, because if I disable that, uh, it's not happening anymore, right? So let's actually do fix me. Uh, I'm going to comment it out. So uh, if I close Emacs right now, it's going to take, you know, several seconds to close because it's still on, right? So we're going to wait a little bit. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And then if I start Emacs yet again without that extension, right, and I just close the Emacs, it closes instantaneously. So obviously it's something within this uh, extension and I'm pretty sure it's a bug that needs to be reported and maybe fixed. Uh, at the beginning I thought, well, I mean, I really like the extension, maybe I'm going to report that and fix it. Maybe somebody already reported that, by the way, I never looked into the issues. Uh, so looks like nobody reported that. Maybe somebody reported that in the closed issues or something like that. But anyway, so, but then I thought that this is a very cool idea that is kind of editor agnostic. You see, like this idea is tied uh, to a specific, uh, to a specific editor. But what if we had a tool like Fix Me uh, that utilizes the same urgency uh, system, but it's not tied to any particular uh, text editor? So something like uh, a command line tool that just collects all of your to dos and just sorts them by the urgency without any extension. So uh, with that tool, you can easily integrate with any text editor. So yeah, what if we had that instead? Um, right. And then I remembered that I kind of already have such tool. So some time ago, I developed a tool called Snitch, right? And it, this is a very cool tool, by the way. I still use it from time to time. No, not that often these days, because I quite rarely use issue trackers these days for some reason. Uh, but anyway, so what it does, it basically searches for all of the to-dos in your project and reports them as issues to the GitHub issue tracker. In fact, it supports more than GitHub. I think it supports GitLab and Gitty. Um, I don't know, people from time to time uh, um, basically contribute different like drivers for different platforms and stuff like that. I don't remember how many platforms it supports, but it supports GitHub and GitLab for sure. Uh, right, so I'm going to put the link to this thing in the description. Um, so let me quickly open Emacs. And I'm going to open the description, uh, snitch the to do collector, uh, collector, there we go. So we can find it in the description. And I thought, why can't I just take this urgency idea 
and steal it and implement it in Snitch, right? So because Snitch on top of reporting the to-dos, it can also show you the list of the current to-dos. So this is one of the functionality of Snitch, uh, right? So if I go somewhere to port, for instance, uh, and I do something like uh, snitch uh, list, right? It goes through the entire project and just shows uh, like what to do's there are, and uh, you can jump to them if your editor supports parsing this kind of stuff, uh, and you can just look at them. And um, I thought, why not just like go ahead and implement that urgency system? So uh, the next time you do the list subcommand, it will sort the to do's by the urgency. Uh, right, I think it's a pretty interesting idea. And that way, this uh, urgency system is going to be um, text editor agnostic, right? Because like you can call this tool from any text editor, right? Uh, so yeah, that's what I wanted to do today. So uh, the topic of today's session is going to be implementing the fix me urgency system in this tool that I've developed, right? It's, by the way, I, it's written in Go, right? If you are into Go, you may like this session. So uh, let's take a look at how Snitch works. Uh, let's do a little bit of a demo, right? So somewhere here, I have a, a project called Snitch Lab, where I experiment with Snitch specifically, right? So I'm pretty sure I need to fetch the latest uh, changes, right? Because I've been experimenting um, off screen. Uh, alrighty, so uh, let's go. I'm gonna open the uh, text editor and go to the Snitch Lab. Snitch lab. Uh, so let's add a couple of to-dos in here. So the first to-do is going to be hello. Then somewhere here, I'm going to add uh, world. And then somewhere here, I'm going to add something like uh, foo, right? So, and then I can try to snitch those to-dos up, right? So if I take a look at the list, so here are the to-dos that I have in this repo. And then I can say, please report those to-dos. What it will do, it will detect the current GitHub project, right? And then it will go interactively, with, interactively through each to-do and ask, do you want to report that? And if you answer yes, it will add it to the pending list to report after it went through all of the to-dos. So do we want to report hello? Yes, we do want to report that. World. Okay. And now it will go and report all of these to-dos uh, as GitHub issues through the GitHub API, right? And if you look into the project, right? Uh, so where is the GitHub uh, snitch lab? Snitch lab. Uh, right. So here they are. Here are the issues that were reported seconds ago. Uh, 15 seconds ago, right? So it was recent and all of that was like created by this tool. So on top of that, it also commits uh, all of the edit to do's, right? So uh, as you can see, it basically updated uh, updated to do and associated it with a specific issue, right? And then in the commit message, it also ref referred to the issue it reported. So it, now if you push these commits and go to the corresponding issues, uh, the commits are going to be mentioned in the issue itself, right? So essentially, it it's actually creates a pretty cool situation when uh, in the source code you have a to do and you know what issue this to do is is associated with, and if you go into the issue like 100, you know what's the well. That's pretty kind of strange. I should have actually reverted that. Yeah, there we go. So and if you go into the specific issue in here, uh, right? If you go into the specific issues, you can see where that to do is located, right? In which commit it was made. So you know it's located somewhere here. So you see like there is like a double connection between the issue and to do. To do refers to the issue and issue refers to the to do. So it's actually pretty cool. Um, okay, so there's also another subcommand which is called purge subcommand. Essentially, if you close this issue, if you're done working with these issues, uh, and you close them, the to-dos are still going to be in the source code, right? So you can use uh, a purge subcommand, will, uh, which will eat, uh, go through each individual reported to-do, and through GitHub API, it will check whether that to-do is already closed or not, and it will suggest you to remove that from the source code, right? So uh, as you can see, it uh, detected that foo is already closed. Do I want to uh, purge it? So I'm going to say yes, uh, and yes. And yes, and there we go, it actually removed all of them. And it made commits removing all of them, right? So if I just refresh this file, as you can see, all of the to-dos were removed by the tool automatically, uh, right? So and if we take a look at the commits it's, it made, it actually straight up removed all of these things, uh, right? So it just like goes ahead and removes these lines. And then you can just push these commits. 
this is basically snitch if you are into this kind of stuff if you're interested in using this tool feel free to do that it's in the description and uh, what i want to do i want to add the urgency system to this uh to this tool right so basically when i do list i want the list to be sorted by the urgency of um of the to do so for that we'll have to do a little bit of modifications a little bit just a tiny bit I don't really know. I haven't touched the source code for quite some time, so maybe we'll have to refactor everything. We'll see. Uh, but, but from what I can remember, it shouldn't take that much of the time. right? Um, anyway, so let me actually uh, fetch the latest changes uh, for this specific project. <clears throat> All right, so uh, merge uh, origin. Actually, I wanted to merge. Uh, origin master there we go so i also have this branch in here so i think i'm going to remove it uh so if i remember correctly how to build go projects you just do go build dot and it will just build everything into the executable right so this is how we do that i think so i do in fact think so mm -mm -mm -mm. okay so we took some time but it's just like it was warming up the hard drive caches i think i think this is what it was doing uh, and then we can go into uh, the snitch folder and just use this snitch as the uh, as the current one. So if we do list, uh, we won't have anything because we don't have any to dos to you know list. So uh, first, maybe this one is going to be second, and this one is going to be third. Right there we go. If I do list, uh, it just lists them, but it doesn't list them in uh, urgency. Right. In fact, it doesn't even understand the urgency. Uh, if I add a bunch of to-dos in here, uh, Vim also does not understand the urgency. So the snitch is not going to even recognize them as to-dos because it recognizes the to-do by a specific keyword, right? So it looks specifically for the keyword and then a colon, right? If you have extra characters in there, well, it will think that it has a different keyword. So it's not going to be recognized as the, um, you know, it's not going to be recognized as a to-do at all. So maybe this is something that we want to extend first. Uh, all right, so let's go into the main Go. Uh, right, and in the main function, in the, where is the main function? A func main, there we go. So in the main function, we handle subcommands. Okay, so here's the list subcommand. We parse the arguments uh, and we just handle some stuff and then we do list subcommand. Uh, list subcommand. So it accepts some sort of function. I'm not really sure what that function is. Okay, so it accepts the project. Okay. Uh, and project is a probably entity that keeps track of the current project, whether it's a GitHub project or GitLab project and stuff like that. And also it accepts a filter. Okay, so essentially the filter takes a to do. I suppose the to do that we found in the project and returns uh, false or true, um, meaning that whether you want to display it or not. And that filter is used. Oh, yeah, because we have a flex uh, like show only reported or show only unreported and so on and so forth. That's why you need some sort of like a filtering in here. OK, that makes sense. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. So let's actually go ahead and just look at this sub command. So, and what we have in this subcommand, we're using walk to do's of directory uh, method of the project. Okay, so you have a project and you can walk to do's of a directory uh, of that specific project. This is actually rather convenient. Uh, right, so you go to each individual to do, and if that to do satisfies this specific filter you provided, it will print that to do. It's as simple as that. Okay, so we need to go deeper and go into the walk to do's of directory method. So let's, let me actually go ahead and grab for that thing. Can I just do something like this? Uh, so let me see where it's defined. Looks like it's defined in here. Okay. So what we're doing here, oh, okay, so we, we call external git ls files command, uh, right? So, and I suppose if you do git ls files, right? So it basically returns all of the files within the project, right? Uh, committed ones, I think the ones that are part of the git index. And then I suppose we are iterating through these files and what do we do with them, right? We check that the file exists and it's not a directory. Oh yeah, this one is actually very interesting. So the, the thing about Git is that it does not really support folders, right? It only supports 
files. And that's why you can't commit an empty folder in Git, right? That's a thing, by the way. L look it up, right? You cannot commit an empty folder in Git because Git uh, fundamentally does not support files. Uh, for Git, um, I mean directories, for Git, everything like uh, each individual file is sort of stored in like a single namespace and the path is just part of the file name. I think, I think this is how it works, but I might be wrong, by the way. So take everything I say about Git uh, with a grain of salt. So, and, but there are situations when uh, by doing git ls files, you will get a directory. And that situation is when that directory is a submodule. And going inside of submodules is actually kind of finicky because effectively you are going into a separate project, right? You're moving from one project to another one. And that kind of requires like a context switching of some sort. And because of that, we just like throw a warning saying that we don't go into the submodules or something like that. So it's kind of like a weird uh, thing that we have to handle. And I'm really glad that I put a fix me in here and also put a warning explaining what the fuck it is. So yeah. Uh, anyway, so then we just take this file path and we use walk to do the file, right? So we go through all of the directories. We go through all of the files within the project and within that file, we go through each individual to do. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this thing is located somewhere here. There we go. So what do we do in here? Uh, we open a file, obviously, right? So we create a buffered reader or something like that. And we read the file line by line. So we scan in the file line by line. Uh, and here we have a pretty complicated thing. Oh, I think I even know what that thing is because it's like a very simple... Um, how is that called? Finite state machine, I think, with the two states, uh, looking for to do and collecting a body. Because in uh, like to do's, you can actually have bodies, All right? So if you do something like this, uh, look, look, look. So I'm gonna do third, and in here uh, I'm gonna say this is a body, uh, right? And then I'm gonna do uh, pow, pow, pow. I don't know, I don't know what to put in here, right? And basically this entire thing is going to be used as the body of the issue and it's going to be used as the description when you try to report it right and that's why we have like a, a simple like a state machine uh that keeps track of this entire stuff right so if you encounter to do we remember that to do and we switch to collecting body state until we uh you know don't see body anymore body is recognized by the same prefix as the to do uh right and then we switch back to our original state so like there is a little bit of a final state thingy going on. Okay, so let's actually see how it works. Uh, if I try to do something like snitch, um, snitch report, right, as you can see, it recognized uh, this to do as the issue, and it also recognized this as a body. This one is very interesting, so it actually parsed it. If I say yes, uh, it will report everything appropriately. So let's take a look at this thing. So here it is. If you take a look at the third, uh, here's the body. So yeah, so it put in the description whatever you put below to do. So the first line of to do, like the first thing after the keyword to do is used as the title and then everything below with the same prefix as the to do is used as the body, right? So that's basically what's going on here. Uh, all right, so, but when we encounter to do, all right, we have, we take our line, uh, oh, and we have a method to line as to do. That's very interesting. So let's take a look at this method, what, what, what it does. Line as to do. Hmm. Okay, that's very interesting. So th this is probably where we parse this thing. Uh, and we try to do two things. We, we try to parse it as unreported to do. The difference between reported and unrep unreported to do is the following, right? So this is unreported to do. And this is a reported one. It has an associated uh, an associate issue number with it, right? So that's what it has. So that's the difference between them. And uh, because of that, they have to use different regular expressions to, to, to be parsed. Uh, so first we, we try to, re, uh, to parse it as an reported one. And then if we didn't succeed, we try to parse it as a reported one. And if we didn't succeed either, we just return nil indicating that this line is not a to do, like try to parse the like other lines. Okay, so uh, I think we'll have to modify both of these methods, right? I think. Uh, so let's actually go into the unreported to do and what uh, we're trying to do in here. Uh, so unreported to do reg regular expression. Um, oh, and okay, so I see. Here's the thing. Um, 
the the keyword in snitch can be customizable. The keyword is whatever you use to indicate the to-do. It can be to-do, it could be fix me, it could be xxx, it could be your mom, uh, whatever you want, right? So, and this is customizable, right? Uh, and it's part of the uh, project, right? So project has a list of keywords and we're trying to parse this stuff with all of the keywords. Uh, okay, so that's pretty cool. So now we have to use those keywords um, to actually construct a slightly different regular expression. So basically we have to look at this last character of the keyword and use that last character in the, in the regular expression saying that you can have several of such uh, last characters. Right. And also the parsed to do also contains the keyword with which it was parsed because then uh, this information can be used to recover uh, the, the original text of the to-do, right? And you need to recover it when you uh, turn re unreported to-do into reported one, right? So as you can see uh, here, to-do is sort of deconstructed, right? So it has a prefix, it has a suffix, it has a keyword, it has an ID, and so on and so forth. And if you take a look at something like this, to-do title, right? So the prefix for this to-do is going to contain literally this, right? So this is a prefix. It has uh, three tabs, slash, slash, and space. This is a prefix. And it's very important to keep track of it because uh, you want to be able to recover the line character by character of this specific to-do. Then we have a suffix, and a suffix is basically this, right? Everything uh, uh, after colon space, right? So this is the suffix, and it's used at the title of the, of the issue. And keyword is whatever you have in here. Right. And since you can have diff different keywords, you uh, can have a fixed mean here. Right. And as you uh, uh, basically recover the actual line of to do, you have to put that keyword in here. So uh, that's why we keep track of the keyword as well. So if we start adding this urgency thing, right, so we start to have like several of these things. So how should we keep track of this thing? Because we also need to be able to recover the, um, the urgency, right? I suppose we're going to actually store, uh, we're going to store the urgency and the number, right? So uh, let me actually try. So where is the struct to do? I think it's something like type uh, to do, but where is it defined? It's defined in a different, in a different place. So it's probably defined somewhere here. There you go. So here's the keyword and we're going to have urgency, urgency. Uh, I hope I spelled urgency correctly. Did I, did I spell it correctly? Can I just do I spell on this thing? Uh, two, 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 done. Okay. So maybe, I, I, I don't know. My I spell plugin for Emacs doesn't work recently. I don't know why. Okay, so we have an urgency, right? And I think we can use this number as basically an indication how many of the uh, leading characters of the keyword to duplicate when we recover the to-do, right? So, and I suppose by default it's going to be zero, and that means you the duplicate zero characters in here, and then if you have one, you add additional character, and uh, so on and so forth, right? So we also have to make sure that this is never going to be a negative. Uh, maybe we could put something like unsigned in here, but I don't know if Golang supports unsigned characters. I also don't know if that's idiomatic or not. And to be fair, I don't even care. Mm. So anyway, so we have urgency. Um, and in here, I'm going to say, maybe I don't even have to uh, specify the urgency. The fields that I don't specify in here, they automatically basically zeroed out, if I remember correctly. So it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so let me, let me think. Let me, let me think. So we need to modify the unreported to do a regular expression, right? So, and what we do in here, right, what we do in here, uh, we just quote the keyword, right? We just quote the keyword and we basically sandwich it between the regular expression for the prefix and regular expression for the suffix. So what I want to do in here, in fact, is just take the first character of the keyword. So it's going to be keyword zero. 
Also, that means that we expect that the keyword has at least one character, otherwise this thing is going to be impossible. Uh, let's go even perform range checks. I think it does perform the range checks, but just, to, well, how oh, it doesn't have a cert. God damn it. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to just do that. <clears throat> so, and what we have to do in here is just we have to construct um, a regular expression that basically says that you can have uh, zero or more of these characters after this thing somehow. I have no idea how, but we can we can try. Right, so we can use this keyword uh, like so. Right, so this is going to be that thing. And then I'm going to say uh, you're going to have like like many of them, or maybe you, you're you going to have none of them. Uh, so also, I think we need to wrap that into um, a group, right? We definitely need to wrap that into a group because we then want to extract that and um, use it as an urgency, right? So that, that's what we want to be able to do, right? So here is another group in here. Um, so I wonder if you have to also quote uh, this thing. Maybe it does make sense to quote it just in case. And I'm not sure if it's going to work, right? Maybe we'll have to uh, turn it into a string or something like that. We'll see, we'll see. So, um, okay. And it's kind of interesting that I have to do the same thing for uh, reported to the regular expression. But let's just focus on unreported to this, right? Let's just add support specifically for those things. And that kind of messes up the groups, as you can see. So uh, here, the first group used to be the prefix. The second one used to be the suffix. But the second one now is the urgency, right? So that means we have to uh, put like three in here. And uh, here I'm going to do urgency, right? Urgency uh, groups. And this is going to be two. There we go. So we have a uh, prefix, urgency and suffix. And there we go. So once we have this urgency suffix, we can use it uh, like this. We're going to take the length of that urgency suffix, right? So that should be it, believe it or not, I think. This is actually quite cool that it's relatively simple, but I'm not sure if I'm missing anything in here. So I'm not even sure if this entire thing compiles, but that's the general idea. Uh, okay, so here we have a single byte. So maybe I have to first uh, turn it into a string, right? Uh, and is it going to compile? It seems to be compiling, actually. That's pretty cool. It's pretty pog, not gonna lie. Uh, so if I now try to do a list, um, it didn't work. Uh, it didn't work because it didn't really recognize those things as uh, us to do's anyway. Hmm. To do, to do, to do, to do. Okay, so uh, we can try to do a little bit of a logging, right? So here's the main.java. So these things are in fact to do's. Um, maybe. I just want to see what's going to be the regular expression. Can I just like go ahead and see? Right, so this is the rejects. Uh, rejects. Uh, which I'm going to put in here, right? So here is the rejects, and then uh, I just do it like that, and then I want to do fmt print ln. Uh, then I'm going to just print that thing, and can I just panic afterwards, uh, saying something like lol, because because I want to see what kind of regular expression was generated in here and whether it's correct or not, because who knows. Um, all right, so let me try to run this in time. Well, this is not what I wanted to run. I wanted to just run this thing. Okay, so this is what... Ah, I'm an idiot. I should use the last one. Okay. <laughs> How do you take the last one? Do you just do length minus one? I think you just do length minus one. Uh, length keyword minus one. I, I guess that's how we do that. All right. So I'm really glad that I decided to actually print this thing and just like see what's going on. And there you go. So this is more or less proper uh, regular expression. Uh, so let me now get rid of all of that. Uh, okay. So. All right. So, and as you can see, yeah, we, we have all of them. But as you can see, it doesn't print the urgency. If you take a look at the original things, uh, the original things, these things have multiple to-dos. Uh, but if you do a list, 
they don't have a multiple to do's because the to do is not recovered correctly. The recovery of the to do does not take into account the urgency, but it should. So uh, let me take a look at how we can do that. If I remember correctly, right, if I remember correctly, this is how we do that. We, we do log string, right? This is the log string. So let's find log string. I think it's located somewhere in to do. Uh, log string uh, and what we do in here what we do in here. Yeah, so we literally do just this thing. Uh, so there's also string. Uh, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of functions that uh, recover the function, the, the, the to do. Log string formats to do for compilation logging. Uh, format is compatible with Emacs implementation, so we can easily jump between these two. So I suppose this is for specifically logging, and this is for like an actual recovery, right? It is for actual recovery. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so if there is a to do, we treat it, uh, I mean, if there is no to do, we treat it as an reported one. If there is a to do, we treat it as a reported one. And that's basically it. So what we have to do in here, we just have to stick this uh, like a single character in here. Uh, but I wonder what's going to be the easiest way to do that. Can I just repeat a character several times in uh, printf so go lang uh, printf repeat character is that a thing i can do repeating a string for specific number of times in golang okay so is that a thing geek for geeks geeks for geeks my favorite resource of all time so who's better by the way w what website is better in your opinion guys is it stack overflow or geeks for geeks i don't know so these days, uh, like I find more useful information on geek for geeks even though I have no idea what the fuck is this website. Like, it's just like whatever comes at the top in the in the Google. Uh, all right, so what do we have in here? So how do I replicate this thing? Are you gonna ask me for? Of course. Uh, anyway, so we have strings repeat. Cool. Mm, I guess that's fine. We can use that. Why not? Uh, let me see. So can I do something like go doc uh, strings uh, repeat? Uh, all right. So and yeah, repeat ret uh, returns a new string consisting of count uh, copies of uh, of string s. Uh, it panics if count is negative or if the result of length uh, overflows. Okay, that makes sense. So that looks good to me. That in fact looks very good to me. So can I just include it? Oh, we already have it in the strings included. So essentially, so here's the file uh, name has a line. Here is the prefix. Here is the keyword. And here we should have the urgency. So what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to take a to do keyword length uh, to do keyword uh, minus one. So then I turn this into a string, right? I turn this into a string and I repeat that string uh, the urgency amount of times, right? And we can take the urgency from uh, from the to do itself, right? So this is going to be urgency. So to be fair, this entire thing is uh, pretty huge. So maybe I'm going to turn it into something like urgency suffix, right? And I'm going to just save it in here, urgency uh, suffix, like so. And so I can reuse this entire thing in here as well, right? So because it's pretty reusable in my opinion. Uh, urgency suffix, there we go. So this is what we got. Uh, this is what we've got. Uh, so this string, what I'm thinking is that why don't we reuse the string inside of the log string? Because it feels like I will have to replicate, the, like duplicate that code everywhere. But I mean, that, that's fine, I suppose. Suppose that's fine. This is something that could be fixed later. This is old code, okay? And there you go. So here we have urgency recovered in the log. Isn't that pog? I think that's pretty pog, in my opinion. I think it's pretty goddamn pog. Uh, so, and we, we kind of have to repeat the same thing for, for the string in here. So let's actually quickly do that. So this is going to be urgency. And after the keyword, I have to use the urgency suffix. Uh, and this is another one. Uh -huh. Urgency suffix. There we go. All right. So that's pretty pog. Um, cool. So I think we still don't support that for the um, for the reported to do's, right? If I go 
into main, right? And I add some urgency to this to do that is already reported. Uh, let's actually add the, the biggest amount of urgency. So it's going to be at the top. And then I'm going to do a list. It's not even there because for the reported users, we have not uh, implemented that yet. So this is something that we'll have to do. Okay, so I think it's located somewhere in a project. All right, so unreported. Uh, there we go. There we go. So here is the reported to the regular expression. And I just have to copy paste this thing there. I think I'm starting to remember how to work with this code base, which is actually pretty pogue. Uh, okay, so this is how we um, construct all of that. This is how we construct all of that. So, and uh, now we have to find line as reported to do, right? Line as reported to do. So that again messed up the uh, suffixes and prefixes and stuff like that. So before this was the first one, the second, um, well, the second one is still the urgency. Okay, so we'll probably have to do something like urgency uh, is going to be equal groups. Second one, and I think this one has to be the fourth one, but the ID has to be the third one, I think. <laughs> So let me let me see actually. Okay, so uh, we we'll probably have to split the uh, the view because I can't see shit in this mist. So um, so as reported. So the first one is the prefix. Okay, the second one is the urgency. Right, that makes sense. Uh, so the ID the ID is kind of like a third. Yeah, it is a third one. And the suffix one is the fourth one. Okay, so if we just like put them in order, that makes sense. I can even like uh, align regular expression like this. And there we go. It looks nice. It looks beautiful. My God. Uh, anyways, so hopefully that is working. That is working. So now I can just like assign the urgency here as well. And that should be it, believe it or not. That should be enough to do the job and it is listed in here, right? So it is in fact listed in here, but the problem here is that uh, it is not sorted according to the urgency, right? So this is kind of a shame in my opinion. So mm, we'll have to fix that. Let's go ahead and fix that. So I think this has to be fixed in the list subcommand, right? So here we are basically printing them right away. Right, we're printing them right away. But what we need to do, we need to actually collect them first into some sort of a, like a list and then sort that list, sort that slice, I think, um, according to the urgency. Right, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're already kind of using sorting for the perch. Uh, so let me see how we do that. Uh, so yeah, this is how we do that. It actually looks pretty straightforward. Uh, and it actually sorts everything in place, which is nice. Okay, so let me go ahead and create something like to do's to list, right? And this is going to be basically a list of to do's to list. Uh, and in here, instead of like printing them right away, uh, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be adding them, we're going to be appending them to the to do's to list, right? To do's to list is going to be equal append uh, to do's to list uh, to do. There we go. So we've got this stuff. So, and now we need to sort this entire thing. So let me find how you sort that. Sort. Yeah. So we have to do, so this should be probably assigned to an error. And if error is not equal to nil, we're going to return the error, I think. Classic, classic. Uh, does it even return? Yeah, it does return error. So you're not supposed to actually crash in here. So then we do sort slice. Let's actually sort all of these things to do's to list, right? To do's to list. We're going to accept the, I suppose these are the indices, right? Uh, and it basically returns whether one is um, greater than another, right? So, and in this particular case, what we're going to do to do's to list i um, urgency. Uh, how do you spell urgency? Okay, there we go. So greater than the uh, urgency of j, right? Greater than the urgency of j. And you have to return this thing, I suppose. And that should be it, I think. Right, so the next thing we need to do, we need to iterate through all of these to-dos. Right, so it's going to be to-do, uh, arrange to-dos, uh, to-dos to list, right, to-dos to list. And uh, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be basically doing this thing, 
All right, so we're gonna be doing the logging. Uh, right, log this string. So hopefully that will make them log according to their urgency. Wait, let's actually do that. Uh, I think I forgot to return new, indicating that everything is Gucci. Uh, to do to list, it's never used, really? What? Oh yeah, so it has to be equals because I declared a new one. Uh, okay, so if I try to do this thing, it's sorted according to its urgency. Isn't that amazing? I think it's goddamn freaking amazing. Okay, so if I just make it the regular urgency, right? If I just make this a regular urgency and now it is actually down there. So they are in fact sorted by their urgency. And this approach is in fact um, editor agnostic, meaning that it will, will work not only in Emacs, it will also work in Vim. And I'm gonna show you in a second. Right, so let's take a look at Emacs. Uh, if I do, uh, if I use the compilation mode of Emacs uh, and just do something like uh, snitch, snitch list, right, there we go. So I can already jump uh, between these things, right? So without a fix me extension, right? So the only thing I needed is this external tool and the compilation mode, right? So that's the only things I needed in here, which is kind of cool. And at any point I can just bump up the urgency for a particular thing, restart this entire stuff, and as you can see, it's sorted according to the urgency, right? So, and how will it work in Vim? Well, this one is interesting. So, as far as I know, in Vim, uh, you can use the make command. Like, I not, I don't really know Vim that much, right? So maybe there are more extensions for this kind of stuff in Vim, but I only know about the standard one, which is like through the make command, right? So, uh, in the make command, I think you have to set up make program, so make PRG and you have to set it to snitch, right? So this is going to be snitch, uh, right? So you have to escape this thing and you have to put a list in here. Then if you do make, right, it will just print you this thing and then you can have a window in which you can actually jump uh, between uh, different to-dos. So as you can see, uh, this thing works like in any editor that can parse the output of snitch. Right, so this is what I meant by an editor agnostic solution. I'm pretty sure Visual Studio Code is capable of parsing these kind of things. Uh, Sublime probably is capable of parsing this kind of stuff. Well, definitely, it has like a build mode uh, and it knows how to parse this thing. You can even customize the regular expression. So uh, yeah, so this urgency idea is very cool. Props to the author of Fix Me. I really like this idea. Check out this extension and see if it works for you. Uh, and um, I'm still in that idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I really like that idea. Uh, I think it's it's pretty lovely. Uh, I really li like how easily you can just bump up the urgency of a particular to-do, right? And just like, yeah, it's just like add, add additional character. It's just super cool. Uh, I really like that. <clears throat> anyway, so what else do we need to do in here? What else do we need to do in here? I think that's pretty much it. So that's the entire stuff. Maybe we want to test how uh, you know, reporting works, right? Uh, because during the reporting, we are recovering the uh, original line and we need to make sure that while reporting the to-dos with extra urgency, we're not losing the urgency because this is something that could happen. Also, now we have a whole room of possibilities. This urgency can be basically maybe bound to a particular label in GitHub. I don't know, we, we can implement that in the future. All right, so uh, we have an urgency, we can sort by that urgency, but we can actually do more with that urgency, right? So maybe we can um, we can do something issue tracker specific on that, we'll see. Uh, anyway, so let me see how it works uh, if I have urgency in here. Okay, so I'm gonna do list and I'm gonna say report. Uh, right, so it, yeah, as you can see, it recovers everything perfectly. I'm gonna say report and uh, report. Hopefully, looks good, right? It, it recovered everything properly. And now if I take a look, uh, oh shit, this one is very interesting. So in the commit message, in the commit message, it does not recover the urgency, but maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine. I'm not sure yet. Should the commit recover the urgency or not? But anyway, so the most important thing is the urgency here in the in the source code. It is here in the source code, so the urgency was not lost. So I'm not sure if the commit message should actually, um, you know, show like it recover the urgency. I don't know. We'll see. Well, I, I don't see uh, that being something super important right now. 
To be fair, to be fair, to be fair. Okay, so I'm gonna create a separate branch. I'm gonna call it urgency, right? So here's the urgency. Uh, all right, so, and what we're gonna do is basically say implement uh, fix me uh, style, uh, fix me style urgency system for list uh, subcommand, list subcommand. So, and we're gonna refer to this explanation, right? So, uh, see this for more info, right? So, and there we go, we have uh, created a commit, but I think we also need to document the um, the entire thing, right? So we need to document the urgency system. So let me let me see, let me let me see, let me let me see. Mm -mm. Parsing value expression. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Okay, so we are explaining how we parsing and reported to do this, and I feel like. What we need to do in here, we need to add uh, this thing in here. So we're going to do something like O, and this is a space. So here we have to say this is a group three, but here we're going to say group two, uh, urgency, uh, suffix, uh, suffix, used to, um, okay, let me actually do it, used to indicate the urgency of the um of the to do right uh maybe we should create a, like a section called urgency like c uh urgency for more info right uh use used to indicate the urgency of the to do the uh high amount of o's the uh more urgent the to do the to do is that does that make any sense i don't know you to indicate the urgency of the to do the higher the amount the higher the amount of o's the uh the the more urgent the to do is is that a good english because i don't speak english i think i think it's a decent english the higher the amount of o's the more urgent the to do is um so i don't know i don't speak english <laughs> Uh, all right, so we have group uh, here as well, and uh, I think I'm going to just copy paste this entire stuff, right? So I'm going to have that. So this one becomes three and four, and this becomes group uh, group two. Uh, we're going to say urgency suffix, right? And I'm going to literally copy paste this entire thing, right? Copy paste into the documentation. Uh, okay, so to do body, blah blah blah, parsing. Uh, so, so this is the example. Parsing uh, switch remembers that the prefix. Um, all the consequent lines with the, uh, the body is reported as the usual description. Okay, uh, remote uh, specification. So here is the remote specification installation credentials. Uh, I'm just thinking where I want to put all of that. So here's the usage custom keywords. Uh, maybe we should put that in the usage custom keywords, uh, issue tile transformation. Um, mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's just a switch, a snitch.yaml. Okay. Development run. Uh, I'm thinking where should I put the urgency, right? So there is um, installation credentials. Okay, so maybe I'm going to put it somewhere here. So here's the example. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, I just remembered, I can actually fold these things. Right, so I'm having a hard time to actually comprehend what the fuck is going on, because I don't understand like what's the structure of this entire thing. Okay, so how it works, uh, we explain like briefly how it works, this to-do format. Uh, right, so okay, so I think the urgency should go into the to do format because it's a part of part uh, part of the to do format. Right, we have a to do body, we have example, uh, we have parsing. Uh, okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So here we're gonna do something like urgency. Uh, okay, the urgency urgency system uh, was stolen from fix me fix me emacs extension right so i'm going to refer to this specific explanation in here right 
Uh, okay, so rank them. Uh, the distinguished feature, uh, the urgency of each notice allowing the user urgency uh, indicated by. Okay. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Right, so. Two, 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 two. Urgency of fix me. All right, so I think I'm gonna steal this entire thing. Uh, right, and I'm gonna just adapt it. I'm gonna just change it up so it's not obvious that I stole this work, right? Urgency of um, to do's. Um, mm, urgency notices is indicated. Okay, the urgency of to do's to do's. Uh, is indicated by a repetition of the final character of the keyword, right? And you can actually have several keywords and the keywords can be customized. For example, one might uh, write um, to do, right? So let's actually use uh, to do how many is we have in here. We have nine is, so I can just do something like, oh, for an important issue. Uh, okay, the uh, list uh, subcommand a subcommand will sort uh, the to dos. Um, eh, uh, uh, will sort the to dos uh, in the descending order by their urgency. Okay, so the urgency system was stolen from fix me Emacs extension. The urgency of to dos is uh, indicated by repetition of the final character of the key of the keyword. For example, one might write to do for an important issue. The list subcommand will sort the to dos in a descending order by their urgency. Right. So uh, I guess that's a pretty like reasonable explanation. I don't know. Uh, do we want to do anything else? To like, where is the to-do body? Oh, I think I think I did a fucky wacky and oopsie doopsie. Right. So here is the to-do, and I have to put it in here. Okay. So here is the to-do body, and here is the urgency, and we're good to go. Uh, okay. Hopefully everything's fine. Uh, document. Document the urgency system right document the urgency system and i suppose i need to go through the uh, continuous integration checks right so this is going to be travis uh and i just want to take a look at the go fmt let's do go fmt and uh force it to write the things all right so go fmt apparently didn't like me actually aligning these things appropriately right so go fmt forces me to write ugly code thank you so much go fmt very cool uh all right so we're gonna do the following thing fix go fmt uh remarks absolutely disgusting okay so what else do we have in here so we also have vet uh i don't remember what it does so i'm gonna use like go lint i don't think vet is actually like found anything significant um okay so this is gonna be bin and let's do lint okay lint seems to be fine oh we also have tests i didn't write any tests for it because i'm lazy right so let's just run the tests and see if we didn't break anything apparently we didn't break anything which is nice i'm super happy that we didn't and let's just do the final build just to see if this entire thing builds okay so let's actually push that right into the repo and create the pull request uh to do to where is the snitch uh right so here is the snitch so compare and pull request uh urgency um so what do we want to see I'm, I'm, i think i'm gonna actually do implement i'm gonna use this commit uh commit as basically title and the body for this thing I wish I could easily do that for some reason. Emacs, oh, not Emacs. Um, GitHub does not allow me to easily do that. Right. So I just want to be able to copy paste this thing. I want to copy paste it in here. Uh, why it does not copy paste the like markdown? It's kind of lame, right? It supports the markdown in the titles, but when I copy the title, it doesn't copy the markdown with it. Uh, right. So this is one of the things that I think Slack used to do, and uh, maybe Discord. I don't remember if the Discord like does that but this is one of the things that slack does right so if you copy the message it copies the markdown along with the message so if you copy it in a different place in the slack it will have the same formatting which is kind of cool so and because of that i kind of expect like all of these services that support markdown to support that as well because it's rather convenient i think 
Uh, all right, so, and in here, I'm gonna also put this thing up here. Implement fix me style urgency system for least sub command and let's create a pull request and see if we didn't break the continuous integration. Hopefully. Uh, so we can also try to um, try to see if, um, you know, the purge command still works. It's kind of interesting. Um, to, 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 to. So where is the snitch lab? Where is the snitch lab? Uh, let me go ahead and just like ooh, mark all of that as closed. Uh -huh. And then I can say something like purge, right? So it recognized this entire thing. Okay. Uh huh. And it removed all of them. Okay, that's perfect. And if I go into the lab, uh, where is the lab? Here is the lab. Uh huh. So it removed. And as you can see, since it supports the body, it also removes the body, right? So it knows where to remove things, which is which is cool. Uh, all right. So here is the second. And okay, so everything seems to be fine. Uh, everything seems to be Gucci. Everything seems to be uh, Tamaguchi. So, uh, and the continuous integration is happy. So we're merging this pull request. All right. So the feature has been successfully stolen. <laughs> right. So that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching right now. Uh, thank you so much, the developer of Fix Me, for such a great idea. And I see you all next time. See you all next time. I don't know when that next time is going to be and on which platform. Is it going to be on YouTube? Is it going to be on Twitch? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, love you all. Mwah.